Good evening, dandies. Welcome to Undetermined, the podcast. Thanks for doing this, man. For sure. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. Um, I appreciate it. Oh, um, yeah, man. I, I appreciate you. I'm a big fan. Uh, Justin Pearson of The Locust, Dead Cross, mm-hmm. uh, Retox, uh, Struggle, Satanic Planet. Uh, We're going to be here all night if we do the whole list, man. <laughs> Don't ask me. I'll forget like <laughs> at least four or five. <laughs> yeah, man. It's an honor. Uh, how could you remember all of those? I try not to sometimes. <laughs> um, it's weird because people always trip out and they're like, you have so many bands. And it's like, I'm 46 and I started playing music when I was 15. And I think there's a lot of time in there. And I, I don't, it's not like I have like, they're not all active bands. I mean, you know, it's it's such a weird thing. I'm like, I, I don't know. I have two active bands right now. It doesn't seem like that insane, you know? Yeah. Right. What is active right now? <laughs> That's a good question. Re- like real active uh, would be mainly probably Def Club. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I just recently did a, a brief tour with the Locust and we jam occasionally um, and we write occasionally. So I mean, I think Locust and, and, and Def Club. And then, I mean, I'm constantly in the studio working with Luke Henshaw, who's in Planet B and Satanic Planet. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and Satanic Planet's never played a show or anything, but we, we know we started working on a second record. But Planet B is almost done with our next LP Nice. You know, and then there's, then there's like, I'm finally wrapping up the new Dead Cross album. So like, there's, you know, there's like stuff, but like, it's not like that there's, there's no real full-time band. Right. In general. And also thanks to COVID, you know, so it's just kind of like, oh, here we, here we are. So, yeah. So is that overwhelming or is it kind of a welcome distraction to be able to kind of shift from project to project? I think I think I'm constantly looking for, for okay, I got to do this next, and then ne- this is next. Mm. So as soon as something, I don't want to say like ends, but like yeah, it's like I'm, I'm always ready to like let's. I'm ready to work on this. There, I have things that I need to do artistically speaking, and and I and I have a list, and I you know I kind of get, I get through it. And mm. I think having that constant outlet, I guess yeah, I guess outlet of 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 stuff is good for me um, because I can sort of funnel uh, life through it uh be it like you know uh, anxiety and stress and anger and frustration and love and all the other all the good things too but you know i'm kind of like ah like here's all the stuff i'm gonna do this thing and this is gonna happen mm-hmm. so i guess it's good because otherwise i'd probably just like go be a dipshit out in public and not have like a <laughs> you know <laughs> not have an outlet for it yeah right there's a lot of dipshits out in public, so that, that's why. Yeah. Yes, yes, there are. <laughs> yeah, there seem to be. That's been nice to stay away from the dipshits. Right. But hard in a lot of other ways. Well, dipshits are becoming more bold lately, too, it seems like. Yeah, they are. They are. Didn't you have just like a four projects or something you had to pretty much shut down when uh, COVID first hit in the first wave? Yeah, there was like a bunch of tours. Um, the, the tours were cr- crazy because it's like, uh, oh, we have all this merch, and we had we you know we had a we had a van rental and we had all these things, and it's like, oh, that's not going to happen. Yeah, it sucked in a bunch of different ways. But I mean, it, you know, I think given the nature of things, we're pretty resilient. Um, as much as I th- I want to always equate like cockroaches to like alt right or something, you know, like neo Nazis or something. But like I right, I mean, I do kind of think like punks are kind of like cockroaches. It's like, oh well, like. We just got fucked, you know, in this way, but like, we're going to be fine and we're going to figure out a way to, to deal with this stuff. Right. Even turn it into a positive in some way. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure out the positive from the, from the pandemic. But <laughs> I'm sure there's something in it. Yeah. I'm sure there is. I just can't, I can't figure it out yet. When I figure it out, I'll probably try to sell it and then make a bunch of money. It sounds good to me. That's the luck with that. That was a joke. <laughs> that's a joke that was like yeah. <laughs> capitalism you know it's like if if i you know if i had the answer to the, the big question i would i would sell that and then i wouldn't i wouldn't have to like hustle so much yeah well honestly like having the pandemic has helped this podcast a lot <laughs> <laughs> yeah people are available yeah yeah I, I i do a podcast too and uh, oddly enough we only do it in person so so it was kind of like oh we're going to not do a podcast for another year. Mm, yeah, that would be different. Yeah. I do kind of like uh, that the we do that. I think it's a, I think it's a good thing. I, I like to be in, in person with the, with the people, you know, it, it's, it just seems like 
a lot more can kind of transcribe. No offense to this podcast here. No, none taken. I'm just saying like, it's very nice when you're in a, in the room with the person. It, it, there's a lot more information, I, th- I think, which helps. Yeah. We've done some in-person stuff and there was kind of a hope that we were going to get to do more. First, it's kind of hard to find people when you're in, you know, Missouri. <laughs> Your, your selection of people available is a little bit limited. Yeah. John and I are in separate cities. Where are you in Missouri? I'm in Kansas City, and John's in Columbia. Okay. Yep. We're in the middle of the state. I'll cruise over there. I don't know when. Yeah, come on out, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. See you in a few hours. Yeah. Where are you based out of now? I'm in San Diego. Okay. So back where it all started for you then. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it started for me, you know, I was born in Chicago and grew up in Phoenix, but when I was 12, I moved to San Diego and that's where it did all kind of start. Right on. Yeah, I know. Man, we share, yeah, a lot of the same aesthetics and stuff and about the same age. Grew up digging a lot of hip hop. Yeah. Yeah. Break dancing. Were you any good at break dancing? Uh, you know, I, I wasn't. I thought I was when I was. I don't even know what age that might have been, seven or eight. Mm. I mean, I thought it was cool as hell. But I, it was weird when breakdancing was a thing. Um, I was really into metal, too, which uh-huh. were you guys also into metal? It was like a weird fuck up mix. Oh, yeah. It was like, oh, yeah. Who who said that was okay? I mean, it, I, it makes sense to me um, that metal and, and breakdancing were, were cool because I, I like to just take whatever's great and do whatever that, you know, and like appreciate everything. I don't need to like stick to like one, one lane, but, um, it was a str- it was a weird- I remember like going to Chuck E. Cheese and shit to like these breakdance battles and there was like all you could eat pizza and then it was like <laughs> and then it was like heavy metal. Like everyone looked heavy metal, but you could break dance. It was a fucking weird mix of stuff. That is weird. But it was also like what, nineteen eighty something? I don't know. I mean Yeah. I was obsessed with like Van Halen and there was all kinds of weird shit going on. No, I remember like anthrax and public enemy and that was kind of a breakthrough oh, yeah. in my book anyway probably the i think the the first probably was the was the very first uh beastie boys record because it had you know, it had like carrie king playing guitar on it and stuff you know and that slayer element to 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 that great hip-hop record was probably what i needed but totally bizarre at the same time yeah I mean, I like the Beastie Boys a lot, but I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like say they're like my favorite or anything, but I definitely think that that record License to Ill just put me on a path that, that needed to happen. No, it was definitely a game changer. And then the way they evolved. Oh, fuck. Yeah. I don't think anybody could have expected that. Yeah. Like super mature. Like, like oh, you guys are like a total butthole. That's cool. <laughs> I mean, not that they were not that like the butthole stuff wasn't that great, but like it was. That documentary that came out recently was just w- was really humbling and to watch them, see, you know, I don't know, it was like really nice to see them a- a- as as regular people and and just kind of like embrace their fuck ups and stuff. And like it was it was cool. Beastie Boys. I didn't think we'd be talking about them, but that's that that band was that band was awesome. Is awesome. I think they influenced a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, definitely especially with Mixmaster Mike. I mean, that guy was a fucking genius. A lot of that stuff strange stuff that he would kind of implement totally was like oh let's do this in the locust like let's make this kind of like weird sound and stuff like let's sound like lasers and shit so you know he had like turntables and maybe an npc or something and you know we were just using like a ton of effects pedals but it was like kind of the same thing not that we were trying the locust definitely wasn't set up setting out to sound like beastie boys we were probably trying to sound like deicide and devo Mm -hmm. but regardless I, I do think it was like a really cool thing, but going back like to the hip hop and breakdance thing was crazy. Cause I remember getting like, um, I wish I knew what the name of these compilations were, but like that label Tommy boy put out all those kind of crazy hip hop records that were, you know, kind of like when break in came out and break in two, like your boogaloo, like when those, when those when that stuff was coming out, it was all just like weird, mm-hmm. you know, kind of shitty raps for the most part. But, but the music itself was like all, robot sounds and i was like oh my god you know i'm a kid and i want and i like music that sounds like robots and (laughs) (laughs) that was the jam for me really um oh yeah yeah jumpsuits you know got to tie bandanas around our heads yeah had a uniform then a costume (laughs) actually you know i had parachute pants yeah i did too yeah i liked all the pockets yep i had red ones i always wanted the leather ones i couldn't pull those off though oh yeah Wearing leather pants is a fucking terrible thing. It's it just, it just <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's, it tears your leg hairs. It's not, it's not, not it, if you have hairy legs, it just doesn't work. No, it doesn't seem like it would be very good. 
Yeah, it was not fun. I filmed this music video and I wore leather pants and it, and it, it ripped all my leg hairs and it was a mess because the the people that I was singing on their their song for like their their entourage like accidentally um, blew up my cl- my regular clothes and so then I had to like drive from the woods and and somewhere and <laughs> I don't even know where it was in Pennsylvania to like back to Times Square to drop off all these kids and I was like fuck you guys and you know it was a bit, it was bad and I was in leather pants and then I had to fly home. <laughs> I'm still stuck on accidentally blowing up your clothes. <laughs> yeah, me too. I was like, oh, you guys are fucking. You gotta be kidding me, man! Like, there's like two sober people here, me, one of them, and you just blew up my fucking clothes. <laughs> and like, I have to fly back to San Diego with no shirt and a leather jacket and leather pants. Like, this is fucking lame. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> <Okay. laughs> yeah that was not a fun time i wrote a book about it uh, half a book about it so nice yeah it got i got i got something out of it i guess <laughs> <laughs> story uh, also got into skating oh yes that was like the that was the thing skate rock too that was like that's what got me on the path, man. All those skate rock compilations was like, okay, here you go. Like, yes. I know you're into skateboarding. And the thing then, like skateboarding was so cool and like not acceptable. And like my, my dad, you know, was really into sports, but hated skateboarding. So that made it really fucking cool. Right. And not only was like skateboarding awesome back then, but they were like, here's the soundtrack. You can listen to all this like jacked up music. And then it was just, it was, it was so easy. <laughs> it's like effortless to be into like rad shit back then. Yeah. What were you listening to, like artist wise? Yeah, the skate rock compilations were the jam for me. I mean, it was like, I mean, okay, so there was there was all the like, you know, the gateway sort of drugs, you know, which like I think around that time, like Ferris Bueller's Day Off came out, and that had Six Six Sputnik on it and Yellow, and yeah, so I really love Six Six Sputnik. I still do, and also Yellow. But then it was like, you know, kind of skateboarding stuff, and then it was like. I remember going to this van skate shop and, and, um, and this dude that worked there was like, you got to buy this tape. And it was, it was volume two. So I think it had the accused and, and septic death and I don't know someone else, but those were the two jam, like the accusing septic death were just like next level shit. It was like super brutal and still is, you know? And I was like, okay, this is cool. But you know, I was into all the, all the basics, cramps, misfits, sex pistols, suicide tendencies. Right on. Then you started like when you when you discovered Septic Death, you were like, "Oh, I'm on to some shit here." Yeah, which which is kind of weird because you know it's Pusshead's band. It's not that far out there, but like musically speaking, if you could find right at that time, though, it's it's a different era. Yeah, but you know, it's it's. I guess there was like no real. I didn't even know that it was Pusshead. <laughs> what I already, you know, I just thought like, oh, the the guy, the artist or whatever d- draws the, the, the band's records, you know, covers. I didn't realize he was singing in it, mm-hmm. you know? And so it, it took me a minute to figure that out. I mean, there was all kinds of weird shit, but that was, that was kind of like my, like the first, like sort of like, oh, I'm going to dip my feet into like the total obscure underground shit. And then from there, I was just trying to get like further underground, you know? And there was this guy in San Diego named Chris BCT and the BCT stood for bad compilation tapes. <laughs> <laughs> he used to take out ads in Maximum Rock and Roll. And so I, and I, and I found out he was from San Diego. So I would meet up with him and basically he would just sell you, you know, bootleg cassettes of like crazy shit, mm-hmm. like just weird stuff from like, I don't you know, like, like here, there's this, um, this Israeli thrash band or, or, or just like, I don't know. I don't even know. Like just r- the most obscure, crazy shit mm-hmm. where, where I would never know anything about it. I would just have this cassette and, and it just sounded insane. And I was, I was like, this is cool. And then, and then I think around that time, like, so I was, I was like around age 12, mm-hmm. sort of meeting people that were in bands in San Diego. And that was kind of like the big deal for me because I started realizing that, that normal people were in bands and, and, and that kind of subconsciously made me feel like, Oh, I could probably do this too. with my friends, not that we could be as good as the, as the people we were meeting and stuff, mm-hmm. but, but it was like, Oh, we could probably at least open for, for them, you know? Right. It wasn't, I'm not trying to, you know, diminish like uh, underground music, but it, to a normal, you know, 12 year old or whatever. I mean, by the time I started playing music, I was 15, but to like a normal teenager, I don't think you could just, say like, here's a, here's a guitar or bass or drums or whatever. And you, you can, you can open for, you know, your favorite bands because I think most people's bands at that time were, I don't even know, you know, uh, maybe Beastie Boys or, or Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, I remember meeting him and like thinking like, if you're, if that's what you're looking to as music, mm-hmm. not that that's bad, but you know, you're, you're not going to be in the opening band, but, but when, 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, no. You can like kind of fuck things up, and you're like, oh, yeah. the the opening. You know, I can be in the opening band for Di or or whatever band. You know, I, I don't know. Like, you know, mm-hmm. what was your first like exciting opening slot? <laughs> Um, the first show I ever played. I mean, it was always like, "Whoa, fuck, we're gonna play!" You know, the our, the first show I ever played with, with in Struggle was wild. We played in some guy's garage in this place called Ramona, which is like really, really far east, like super racist east in San Diego. And <laughs> you know, it was just like a bunch of fuckheads, like <laughs> total like quintessential nihilistic punk rock eh, and skinhead dicks. You know, and I was right. like. We were like children, you know, yeah. there's, there's a video of it. I'm like, what in the actual fuck are we doing? Like, we look like babies, you know, and there's like big dudes like trying to mosh. <laughs> like, this is fucking lame. Like, I don't know what's lamer, our music or these grown dudes like moshing to our to the shit we were playing. <laughs> That's crazy. Fuck. I mean, there was no, it was always like right away as, as I, I, I lucked out, you know, my, my friends were, were, were people like downcast and it was mm-hmm. like playing with downcast was awesome or playing with crossed out mm-hmm. or whoever, you know, I don't know. Um, born against. Yeah. You know, it was fucking rad to be like on a, on a bill with born against like that seemed kind of insane to me, you know, for sure. But then looking back, there was like, there was like some crazy shit where like, the offspring open for struggle, you know, I'm like, like, this is weird, you know, I, but I didn't know at the time, at the time we were just like, this band fucking sucked. <laughs> and then, I mean, they still, I, you know, no offense to them. I think they still do suck. No, you go. <laughs> I can't even remember anything about them, you know, playing. I just remember the show and huh. we played, but there was a cooler band, like this band, the Grups played, which I think was like someone from like Op Ivy or something maybe, or had someone cooler in it than the offspring you know we it, they didn't it, it didn't really resonate and just like whatever and then later on i was like holy fuck that band that's huge right now mm-hmm. you know open for us at the che that, that's weird <laughs> there was always like kind of crazy shit you know like it was it was cool to play with filth i was i was pretty excited about that mm-hmm. econo christ i don't know there was all kinds of bands that were there was it was awesome always awesome yeah, well, I'm sure that's probably a little bit different too, like where you are compared to like where we are too. Like that sounds amazing when you're stuck in the Midwest. <laughs> it's funny in, in in retrospect because everyone's like, you know, okay, a good example is Crossed Out. The band's legendary. People fucking flip out, you know, over Crossed Out, and it, <laughs> and they were always great, and I loved that band. They're one of my favorite bands. But it was like, you know, growing up, they, they were playing every show that, you know, not that I didn't want to watch them, but I was like, oh, yeah, like them again, you know, and that, that sounds like a dick, you know, uh, for me to say. Or like, you know, again, like Born Ants or something, it, you know, it seems crazy that Born Ants came all the way from New York, but they came here and they recorded with, you know, Bob Barley from Fine Light Communications. And then they played the show with Tit Wrench and Struggle got to play. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't like, it wasn't that wild or, or, or whatever at the time, you know, and it, I looked up to bands like Crossed Out and Born Against, but they weren't sort of like the legendary status that they have now. Right. And back then it was kind of like, oh, these slightly, you know, like two, like what, like two or three years older than us, you know, I mean, like slightly older band, you know, like uh, they're cool as hell. Like they're super rad and like kind of way more popular than Struggle, but we're going to play a show with them. Yeah. And, you know, now it'd be like if the fucking Born Against is playing, people would like, you know, shit their pants. I don't know. Whatever. Right. But man, you put in a lot of hard work too. Oh yeah. I mean, shit. You know, I just really like your DIY method of, of a lot of things you've done. Um, and so I don't know if you're, if, you're, if a, this has been beaten to death and you're just tired of talking about it, but the uh, guerrilla advertising campaign with Jerry Springer, I think is just hilarious. Yeah. I mean, none of it, none of it was thought out. Uh, not, I'm not even talking about just Jerry Springer. Like just nothing ever was thought out. I don't know. It's weird, man. I just feel strange looking back. Okay, for one, when I was 15, I never thought I'd be 46. I don't ever thought I'd be 46 ever. You know, just like this isn't going to happen. Right. I remember seeing this band Straight Ahead or, or some some kind of strange band. And, and I forgot what they were called. Um, but the singer had a mustache. I remember being like, what the fuck, dude? This guy's got a mustache. Like, that's so crazy. Like, no one has mustaches. You know, and it was like the weirdest thing. Straight Ahead. Yeah, I think it was, it was wild. I was like, I had a fucking full on mustache. Um, you know, and now it's like everyone has mustaches, but I, I thought, you know, as a kid, it, it was just like, we got to get through this thing right now. That's happening right now. I'm surprised I'm not dead, but, uh, back to the, to the, 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 the marketing thing, it was just kind of, kind of like, this is like presented to you, you know, and you can do this thing. 
and you, and you just did it. I mean, what else was I going to do? Like, for instance, you know, it's Jerry Springer's Jerry Springer. Um, but at the time, I never thought like, oh, this will be good. This big like cult thing that I can talk about for the next 30 years of my of my fucking musical <laughs> you know career. Right. It was just kind of like, hey, you want to do you want to go on this show? I, I'm not, you know, and like, what was I doing at, at whatever 23? You know, it's like I was worked at this co-op in San Diego and I played in one band and I wanted to go to Chicago for free. And <laughs> I didn't really think about it much. It was just kind of like, why not? Like, why not lie and go and do this stupid thing and like, or try to bum people out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's weird. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it's just kind of like what, whatever fell in our laps, we would kind of utilize that element and do that thing. And then that was the goal, you know, okay, hey, we can try this. And then that it wasn't really like uh, thought out long term. It was kind of just like right now. Right. Not a long game. Right. Almost <laughs> like like found art. Hey, this is what I've got to work with. Uh, let's see what happens. That's pretty much how I started a record label. It's just like, oh, yeah, we're just going to steal all the covers from Kinko's. <laughs> it was, yeah, everything was just what could you scam next? I mean, I remember going on tour and we had those, it was called Groovers, or I think at the time it was like where you had the tape packing tape on the dollar bills and you put them in the vending machines and, and then uh, you pulled it out and got the money out. Mm, yeah. and, then, and then there was salting where you just go with like a, like a bottle of salt water and just shoot, shoot it in the change machine. And then everything comes out, oh. but we would just go on tour and like fuck up every vending machine. Wow. You know, and like make enough money. Like it was kind of crazy to be able to go on tour at age 16 and eat decent food and occasionally stay in a hotel where like we weren't getting paid for playing, you know, playing shows uh, at all, really. You know, like here, I don't even know what we were getting paid back then, but it was not enough to put gas in our two cars or whatever the fuck we were touring in. Right. It just we just like steal and shit. <laughs> well, I'm sure, the statute of limitations is run out. Oh, I, it's fine about the Coke machines. I don't care. <laughs> but there's other things that we stole from that were probably like not that good to talk about. Still ethically, but not like. Uh, you know, like, oh, that's a federal offense. You probably want to not talk about that. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like, oh, you stole from Coca-Cola? Like, that, yeah, I don't know, whatever, Coke, come and get me, I guess. <laughs> but like, oh, you stole from the U.S. government? Oh, you're going to fucking prison. I, I, I don't know if that shit runs out. But it is what it is. I'm making a call right now. <laughs> But kind of going back to that, you were, you know, the, those influences and people that you looked up to and, you know, that, that had an impact on you. You're kind of on the flip side now. I think there are probably a lot of younger people that kind of look at you the same way. Does it feel weird to recognize that? Oh, that's an interesting question because I don't, I don't think there was ever this like linear thing. So it, it, for me, I remember kind of getting like when the locust was starting to like really go and we had, you know, we had like uniforms and and we were getting fucking weird and, and stuff. Mm -hmm. I remember there always being, uh, I, mean, I mean, I guess I was in my mid twenties or, or late twenties or something. And there was, there was always really young people at our shows, like really young where like parents would bring their kids and stuff. And it was cool because a lot of it reminded me of me as a child when I was 12, I met the cramps and, and they, and they were really nice to me. And that kind of was insane to meet a band and have them and have them be really really, really genuine. And yeah. And I remember thinking, I want to be like, not the cramps musically. I mean, yeah, that'd be great. But like the cramps were to me, like, well, I want right. to have that same attitude. Yeah. Let's see this 10 year old kid and, and be like, you're the fucking future, man. Like you got to do this. Like you're here and, and you're being exposed to this weird shit, like get it together and like start a band, you know? And so it was kind of, it was kind of like that element was, was there a little bit. And then it, and then it went on where this is a weird one for me. Uh, you know, my second band was Swing Kids and, and, it, and it wasn't, I, I mean, I think the band was fine or good as a whole, but the, the, the weak link in the band musically w was me. Um, I didn't know how to sing. I didn't know how to write lyrics. And it was, it, I think my contribution was just stupid to the band. And if I could go back, I would, I would love to like properly work on songs uh, better as a vocalist, but it, it was what it is. And I think it, I think it's okay for me to be critical on stuff that I'm part of, but I'll get a lot of people saying like, "You saved my life!" Like, "Swing Kids saved my life," and I'm like, "What the fuck? Like, why that man? Like, that's <laughs> yeah. I just farted that shit out there, you know? Not that I wasn't being insincere, I just had no fucking clue what I was doing musically, and I and I'm like, "Wow, why? Why?" You know? But then, you know, I guess it's kind of like looking back, and 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 you could kind of maybe say the same thing for 
I don't know, cr- crossed out maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Like, you know, where's the, where's the vault? You know, I love crossed out. I'm not criticizing them, but when you look at it musically, you're just like, where's the chorus? <laughs> or, you know, <laughs> where there is there a verse? You're like, no, there's not. You know, I didn't think of it like that. I didn't think of it like a, a proper strong show. There's like, I would just like b- belt out a couple lines over and over. And then that would be the end of the song. And it was, I just wish I could have done it differently, but, but to constantly have the younger people say that I saved their life was it's like, fuck, man, that's a lot. Of, that's a lot to put on, on me. I mean, I'm glad that I did that. I'm glad that I was able to aid in these people not dying. That's fucking pretty important. But it was just weird to have that, have these slightly younger people say these things to me where, where I, I don't know, it was weird. And so then, and then going off, you know, going a little bit older, I just, it, it's, it's always kind of like this strange, um, the age thing is weird. I don't know. I don't feel like I'm on the other side of it now. I, like, I remember starting a band and thinking, you know, okay, our band's been together for two years. That seems like a, a long enough time. Let's break up and do something new. Because when you're when you're 16, you know, it's, you've only had 16 years on the planet. But when you're, you know, when you're 46, you've had you've had 46. You there's a lot of years you can do all kinds of shit and not not just like piss it away after two years. So it just everything had such a short shelf life at the at that early part. In, in life or, you know, early part in like playing music and stuff. So I don't know. It's just strange to, to, to look back in retrospect and to think about it like that. I don't, I don't know if it's like, I'm on the other side now and I'm an old dude and there's, you know, young kids. Like I still kind of think like, I'm not trying to be a dick, but I'm, I'm like, who the fuck cares about what I do? Like, do, do people care? I don't know. Because then I'm also in like this weird place with, with band, like being in a band, like dead cross where I'm in the band where there's like older people. So, so there's like these kind of, Mike Patton and and Slayer fans, right? You know that are ten years my senior that are just, I mean, they don't give a fuck who I am. They're just they're there for the elders in the band. But but I don't know. There's all there's always just been a weird thing with like I, I, uh, age as as like a linear perspective for me. It doesn't really compute because also too going back to like the locust stuff when there would be like a ten year old kid there, there'd also be some seventy five year old jazz freak that's there because. They're like, what are you? This is fucking wild. Like, this is totally like the shit I like, you know, free jazz. I'm like, <laughs> right. I mean, it's not, but I'm like, that, that's cool that we have the 10 year old and the 75 year old at this, at the same show enjoying this music, which is cool because a lot of people, a lot of bands I don't think can accomplish that. And I, and I'm grateful that we, we you know, were and are able to, to, to pull that kind of shit off. And, and I guess like that's always been on our, our collective radars. You know, it's kind of like, I don't want to only appeal to, to men or boys, you know, like that's, that sucks too. You know, I want there to, I want there to be like, yeah, I don't want it to be like a men's room, which, which is like punk and hardcore t- tended to be when growing up. It yeah. was like, dudes, I was like, fuck this, you know? Right. And also, I mean, I remember being 15 and in struggle and we were, we had a show with bikini kill and the, you know, and Kathleen just like went off on us cause we were all boys and we're just like, this is kind of fucked up, but like also kind of rad, <laughs> you know, that she's like talking shit to us. And and it's like, it really helped. I think it helped open my eyes to something early on, like with gender identity and in the realm of aggressive music, because I knew like, oh, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be for dudes. And that, and that was cool. Right. To me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I just, hardcore is just like this white male thing. It was just like, ugh. Yeah. Well, and you know, it's, uh, it can attract those elements and you talking about skinheads earlier too. That's a problem. Mm. Fuck. Yeah. And I think uh, Matt and I were talking about this earlier. I don't think we see as many like uh, skins around this area. Right. Well, they just don't have to be that subversive in Missouri. Well, so like they're normal looking. It's kind of getting scary. Yeah. It's the status quo of so many people, so many rural areas and, you know, just the Trumpsters and things like that. They, They don't have to put on an outfit that says this is what it just just maybe a sticker on their truck right <laughs> that's all it takes uh-huh. i mean at least when you're a skinhead you like skinhead look fucking cool you know i mean like, they look <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. yeah i mean it's a good look uh as long as they're not like beating me up there i think it's a good look but you know then you have like you know these the modern day neo-nazi is you 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 have no fucking clue yeah which Part of me is like fucking chicken shit, you know, like hiding behind something. Like, come on, right. dude, at least stand for something. At least fucking wear it. And like, so we know who our enemy is. Right. That'd be cool. Mm-hmm. Now it's like a mind fuck. You're like, what? Well, sure. 
you're a racist asshole. Whoa, how'd that happen? Yeah. I get you know, I, I had to deal with that shit. I mean, I don't know, like on social media, there's always these fuckheads and like crazy fuckheads. Yeah. I'm like, okay, wow, you guys are really into like supporting white supremacy and you like my band. Yeah. Like, this is weird. Can we? We gotta stop being friends here. Can you not <laughs> like my band anymore? I'm okay. I mean, I don't know. Like, if I was a white supremacist asshole and and a band was like, "You're fucking lame for being like that," I'd be like, "Well, fuck you know, fuck you." I'm gonna still support you, you know, or I don't know. I'm gonna still follow you on social media. It's like grow some fucking balls or whatever, you know. Like, I don't know. Like, it, I don't like you. Like, get the fuck away. Like, I do not like white supremacy. Like, you don't need to engage with me. At all. Just fuck yourself and go away. To be fair, they don't have a lot of choices. There are, like, not a lot of good quality options for them out there. Yeah. There's a lot of that shit out there. <laughs> Ariel Pink. Can't they all like Ariel Pink? Didn't he go to the insurrection? I don't know. Maybe there's not. Not enough. No, poor guys. God, I feel for him. Yeah, that's the most suck to be a white supremacist and not know where to go. And you're just like, <laughs> oh, poor oh, me. I don't oh. have any good trash bands. <laughs> Yeah. They all like yeah. black people. <laughs> you know, it's pretty funny. I mean, I grew up with like so many fucking skinheads beating me up and they all had black flag tattoos. You're like, mm. dude, what are you yeah. doing? Man? Like, hey, yeah. fucking up. <laughs> I'm waiting for a neo-Nazi with a locust tattoo. And then I'm, then my mind can be blown and I'll be like, okay, I've seen it all. But it yeah. hasn't happened yet. That's next level. But the black flag bars, it's like, okay, you still have like nihilistic punk rock in their in their veins so they can they can tattoo it and then and just go beat up people for no reason. Right. Or for what for reasons that are stupid. I, I, I think sometimes there's not a lot of intelligence there. <laughs> no shit, really. <laughs> right. Like they they don't identify with a message really. It's just I like to listen to loud shit and beat people up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was like the 90s in San Diego or, you know, it was just, it was really, really brutal with skinheads, like fucking crazy. It's funny too. There's this dude, I don't even say his name. Anyhow, there's this fucking skinhead that used to beat up everybody. He beat up three fourths of the people in struggle. <laughs> and because we were like communist and we were fags and we were on all these different things. Right. And then he apologized to me years later. And, and I was like, it's fine, man. Like, I don't, I'm over it. Like, I'm alive still. Like you didn't beat me up that bad. You know, like I still think you're a fuckhead and, but like whatever. And that was fine. And then like a few more years later, he's like started a record label and the dude was like, can I, can I release the, the struggle stuff? And I was like, dude, you gotta be kidding me, man. Like, you, <laughs> like even if you are like 100%, like the most left leaning, whatever, like you still, no, no, there's no fucking way. No, you didn't earn that. You said you're sorry. And I appreciate that. But no. I didn't even appreciate that. I was like, I just, like, it was like wishy-washy shit. You know, it's like, it's kind of like, you know, I'd always joke like, like about like sharp skinheads. It's like, okay, like a neo-Nazi, like, you you know, at least they stand for something. A sharp is like, I'm not racist, but I still hate, you know, fags and I still hate women. And I right. still, you know, like they're still a total fucking piece of shit. Right. They just aren't a racist piece of shit. And it's like, ugh, I mean, <laughs> that's just like, a, that's like a fucking, you know, busted version of, of what you're, you know subscribing to right well and sorry i'm deep down if you dig deep enough they've still probably got some racist shit going on if they've got all that other stuff oh, yeah institutional racism yeah. there are lots of people that don't think they're racist that are fucking racist as hell dude it's crazy you know yeah it's it's wild <laughs> i've got a fucking cousin who doesn't think he's racist because he likes steve harvey that was like his i watch steve harvey well now then you're absolved man yeah Oh man, I went to see. I went to my grandmother's ninety first birthday, and it was um, actually it was in, in in Carlinville, Illinois. You guys know where that is? Uh, what's it by? It's by nothing. It doesn't matter. It's in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> okay. My uncle went, and you know he's fucking totally not on top of his shit. Like he's the kind of guy that told me I was going to go to. He told my mom that I was going to go to hell when I was five because I didn't go to church and stuff. Right. He rolls up, and it's like you know it's it's like my grandma's birthday party, and we're all hanging out, and I, like right away he's like. Critical race theory is, you know, just, you know, fucking, I was like, dude, you got to stop, man. Jesus. And, you know, his, his wife's like, Jim, like, don't, you know, and I'm like, it was, it went like downhill really quick. I was like, dude, you're, you're totally racist, man. Like it, 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 the, the conversation went on for a bit. And, and at one point he started losing his cool. He's like, I'm your, I'm your elder. Yeah. I was that. like, dude, and you're wrong. Oh, you're no. my elder and you're wrong, which is like a weird thing for you to think about. And I wanted to be like, dude, you're fucking arguing with me about like, 
critical race theory being taught in schools, which it wasn't. I don't know, man. You want to fucking, I can unload all kinds of shit. Like I hate all cops and I'm part of the state. I'm a you know card carrying member of the satanic temple. Like <laughs> I, I'm totally into like abortions, you know, like, I don't know. Like I could have just like fucked the dude up and like said all kinds of shit to like blow his mind. But I was like, dude, my gr- it's my grandma's birthday, man. Just chill out. Like, right. Just chill the fuck out and don't bring this shit up. Like we can think each other are assholes and like, we just kind of fucking be cool for, for grandma, you know, and he couldn't be cool for, for his, he's a dick. Like, and his whole family knows he's a dick. It, I think, I think his whole family knows, I mean, at least his other siblings think he's a dick and, and, and it's like, dude, grandma's cool as hell. Like, just shut the fuck up. You know, we don't need to talk about this right now. I just felt like I was, I felt like I was talking to Tucker Carlson, you know, he's like squinting, like even like Tucker knows. And I was like, dude, you gotta stop, man. You gotta stop. What was the point? The point is, the guy sucks. Yeah. Yes. The skinheads suck. <laughs> yeah. Not all of them. I met cool. I met. No, no, no. Yeah. That was like a big deal. Like when we were, you know, like Springfield, Missouri, we'd go to club shows mm. and Racist. there was like you had to watch out. Like you really had to make sure, okay, non racist skinheads were cool as hell. Yeah. But you had to really kind of watch out for yeah, it. These kids. I just never knew if they were racist or not. I was like, just you know, they would they would like they would be like so wishy washy, like, oh, you're not racist now, and like, oh, you are, right? Like I, you know, I was like, oh, San Diego boot boys, like you guys are white power, and then like all of a sudden you're like not white power, like just make up your fucking minds. You guys seem lame regardless, right? And you beat me up regardless if you're racist or not. You're still kicking my ass. So it was like it was fucking weird. Maybe you were at this show, John. Were you at the Boston's show in Springfield where uh, Dickie stopped the show? No. And he's like, fucking racist skinheads, get the fuck out. You are not <laughs> welcome here. Yeah. You know, he was harsh. And I was like, yeah. And half the crowd was going, yeah. And then there were some quiet ones. <laughs> did, they did they leave? I mean, it yeah. was like the last thing they would do. Like, hold on. I'm going to cut out right now. See you guys later, you know. They, I don't know if they I left. I, I didn't really. I was more like, yeah, yeah, and paying attention to the band. And, you know, they weren't fucking with me. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I remember that year, though. They, yeah, they broke up a lot of shows. Uh, Skins did there on like Division Street Club. And uh, I was there just coming in and just beating everybody's ass just for no reason. Yeah. Just fucked up. The funny thing is, like, now it's like, going back to like the look of skinheads like where i said i think it like looks cool like i mean now you have now you have proud boys or like dudes wearing khakis you're just like you look like you work at fucking target you know like, yeah. you know, like <laughs> right. now you don't look cool like you you know like we're like skinhead attire like at least looks cool to me yeah now you just look like a fucking idiot that works at target no offense to people <laughs> working at target it's just like it's like right. you're not like cutting edge or i don't know yeah it's not counterculture that's for sure it's like nice khakis bro <laughs> <laughs> right you look like an it guy with the tiki torch <laughs> but yeah enough of them <laughs> satanic planet yeah so there's that one too tell us what's going on there um nothing right at the moment yeah we, we you know we did our record and and, and everybody hated it <laughs> it's not true I kind of like started working on some new stuff, but I mean, everyone hated it because I think, I think we got, you know, all this press because Lombardo joined the band and everyone's like, Oh, Slayer, it's going to sound just like Slayer. And you're like, no, it's going to be totally like industrial, not, not metal. <laughs> like the metal world was like, fuck this shit. You know? And you're like, eh, it wasn't, we never said it was metal. Mm-hmm. So that was fun. How can you avoid that though? If it's Lombardo, you just can't. Yeah. But it's like, if you're a fan of, of his work, I mean, you don't have to like his work, you know, but if you're, he liked it, obviously yeah. he played on it, you know, and like, no, it's badass, man. No, I'm there for things. I'm not saying that, but I'm just like, if you were just like some dipshit, you're just like, right, right. This is a fucking music. And you're like, oh, well, I mean, if the guy likes doing it, just chill out, you know, or don't buy it. Right. <laughs> or don't stream it or whatever it is you're doing that you're so mad about. Uh, but yeah, people just got like really mad about it, <laughs> but it's cool. I think everybody got pretty busy with other things. Lucian getting busy with like, people trying to blow up the satanic temple and trying to kill him and stuff. <clears throat> He's been like having all these like crazy things happening, but uh, the temple is rad, man. Like I was not a, a card carrying member until we started the band. I felt like I needed to become one mm-hmm. and I am totally in support of everything they do legally. I think is, I think is great. I mean, I think it embodies like true punk spirit. Yeah, it does. 
I don't know. Yeah. That, uh, so it, it's nice to be in a, in a band with, with all those guys. It's cool. It's weird as fuck. It's like not a normal thing. Mm-hmm. And I, I can, you know, I can appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. So how many virgins have you sacrificed so far? Um, just myself. And that was it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I mean, it, 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 you know, like I really think that um, the Satanic Bible that was um, Anton LaVey's um, Satanic Bible w- w- is a really good book, uh-huh. and I and I think it resonated a lot with me young- when it first came out when I was younger. But then I started realizing like his sort of authoritarianism. I like he, he has like this kind of weird track record where where I'm like this is this isn't very progressive. Mm. You know, I, and I just thought like, oh, Satanism is just pr- pretty hokey. I mean, right. it's, it's cool. As, okay, again, like I said, skin is cool. I think Anton LaVey like looked fucking super cool with his pointy right. thing. And, you know, he like mm-hmm. he looked rad, but like, you know, he was, he was kind of not that, not that rad. And it was kind of dumb. Right. Like a lot of the shit he was doing was pretty fucking stupid. Where, where like now, you know, and I see people are like, the Church of Satan, and they're like, no, 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 it's not the Church of Satan. It's the Satanic Temple, which is a completely different entity in itself. And and you know, I think that that was something that I kind of gravitated towards. Mm-hmm. It started, but basically, me and, and Luke Henshaw have a podcast called Cult and Culture, and we had Lucian on an episode. Mm-hmm. That was how everything sort of started. Like we were like, "Fuck, this guy's rad." And the main point was to do a, a, like a like a religious sermon. <laughs> backed by the band planet b so that was going to be like planet b with, like with lucian like kind of just speaking cool and then it became more musical and then it became like an, its own band in itself mm-hmm. right on it was a mistake i like that a good mistake sure you know, <laughs> you know not, not a mistake like i shouldn't have done that like a mistake like we didn't we didn't like think it out it's kind of like going on jerry springer it's just like oh fuck it, i'll just do this yeah and it was kind of like oh fuck we'll just make this satanic record and then that was and that was how it became a thing nice yeah I think if you think things out, they they usually aren't quite as good. No, oh, right. Your beliefs primarily though. Uh, atheist still. Me, yeah, yeah. I'm an atheist. Yeah, I made my mind up a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. Prove me wrong. You know? Prove me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I used to say I was an agnostic, but then I was just like, I'm just not committing enough. I don't think. Uh, yeah, like saying you're agnostic is kind of like saying you're a sharp skin. You know, you're just like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I mean. I, I think like okay, you know, agnostic might be a, a term that I would it would it would would embrace in the sense that like humans are just fucking ridiculously naive and arrogant, and I don't think we even have the mental capacity to you know process what it is. Right. Like you know, so I mean, are, we have these like feeble brains that are like, there's a god or there's not a god. Like maybe there's just like something that we can't even like. I, there's not even a word to articulate. That's exactly, see, and I identify as agnostic, and that's exactly where I'm coming from. But I feel like I should just take the stance of atheists just to be like, you know, fuck you guys. <laughs> Not you, but like, just like, fuck you to the people that are anti choice and sure, like the homophobic, what is it, like straight conversion? Like, just, you know, fuck them. Fuck t- t- Tucker Carlson again. Like, fuck all you guys. You know, I want to, so I just say like, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's kind of like saying like, I'm part of the Satanic Temple. Like people are just like, what the fuck? You know, like I want to tell my uncle that, you know, not, not that I'm a Satanist. Right. Like I don't believe in Satan, but I want to say that just to be like, here, dude, just go ahead and chew on this for a minute. And, right. But you know, to that crowd saying agnostic and saying atheist is exactly the same thing in their head. It is. But when you say you're an atheist, you kind of have like a little bit more of like, a kick in the balls. Yeah. So, you know, you're just like, let me just fucking, let me just punch you in the gut and kick you in the balls. Like, that's kind of like my, my goal, I think with, with those people. Yeah. Or the ovaries, whatever, wherever you want to kick them, you know, like, I just want to be like, here, look, I just think <laughs> fuck you, whatever I can do to make you like really upset. And that's the path that I will take. Right. That makes sense. I get it. Yep. <laughs> I can respect that. Yeah. And, and you know what? Like, if there's people like, um, there's this friend of mine. He's a minister okay. of a church. He's, he used to be in San Diego. He's a, he's a gay minister, which mm-hmm. which I thought in itself was pretty fascinating. I'm like, what the fuck? And we became really good friends. Mm-hmm. And it was crazy because, like, you know, he's, he's a, a gay Christian. And I'm like, I'm a straight atheist. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, but we came like, but I, I, we would engage in these really wild conversations. And, and, and you know, when he, when he was sober and it was, it was like pretty, pretty rad. I was like, whoa, man, like, I don't know. Like I, I struggled with the pun intended. I struggled with the, like him, like being, you know, 
I'm like, dude, you realize that God hates you, right? Like, cause you're gay. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. you know? And, and, you know, he, he couldn't like, uh, he would spin it in all these weird ways. I'm like, okay, whatever. But aside from all that shit, like he can believe in whatever he wants to believe in. It's fine. He's a good person. And that's, that's really what it came down to. Mm-hmm. But he, I felt like he was kind of like a real punk. Yeah. And like a, like an ethical way, like, you know, like his church or whatever would make these billboards. And, and it was like apologizing for Christianity. <laughs> like I was like, mm-hmm. this is some crazy shit that you're doing. Like having this billboard that says like, we, we apologize for, for Christians, you know, or for Christianity, like being, you know, homophobic and, sh- and shit. Like mm-hmm. it was, cr- it was weird. I was like, dude, I, I'm not fully understanding where he's coming from, but to me, it felt like something really, really strangely subversive and, and needed. Yeah, like the situationist, you know, where you're just kind of like, here's this term or this this slogan, mm. and it's gonna it might not make 100 percent like all the way through like sense, but it's still gonna fuck up people and make them think and get us somewhere. It's like it's creating dialogue, it's creating healthy, much needed dialogue, and so I I, I embraced it in that sense. Right. The point is that I thought he was like a rad dude, and I still think he's a rad dude, and. I wish there was, I wish all Christians were like him or Jason Hammaker. That guy's like full. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Jason Hammaker, my favorite Christian out there. Sorry to the, to the <laughs> minister, but Jason Hammaker is my hands down favorite Christian uh, follower of God. If you're not familiar with Jason Hammaker, I highly suggest it. He's such a great dude and he's a killer drummer, but um, he's like the best Christian. If all Christians were like him, I would, I'd be like, you know what? You guys are pretty cool. Uh, it'd be fine. I wouldn't have to say I was. Atheist, I could say I'm agnostic. <laughs> yeah. 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 Now, what was the Gandhi quote that was kind of like that? You know, I, it, I, I love your Christ. It's your Christians that I could do without. Yeah. 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 I thought the quote was like, I'm hungry like Gandhi. That's, uh, I thought that's what you're going to say. <laughs> no. And I, I'm sure I hatcheted the, the quote, but that's basically what he was saying. Totally. Which says a lot, you know, and it's like, man, you guys need to get your shit together. But, you know, people like have co opted it and, it's kind of like watching that movie or that TV show, The Righteous Gemstones. Like that seems like pretty accurate. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, my father was a uh, was a minister actually, and saw a little bit of that circuit in the South. Uh, not mega churches. I mean, there were no mega churches back then when I was a kid. But yeah, very much like that. I mean, at the, at the same time, it's like with those. It's like, well, that's capitalism, and they pulled one over on everyone. Oh yeah. I don't know. Maybe maybe that is like real Christianity. You're just like, I'm going to figure out this way to make a fuckload of money. Oh, my God. I don't deal with it well when I see it. Like I thumbing through the channels, you know, if I'm just like, oh, it's on. And I catch like one of the Christian networks and some of the shit that they're spinning. Like and I saw one like, you know, have you made your three hundred dollar, you know, wealth seed donation or something like that? Wow. And I'm like, fuck you. Yeah. I want to hunt you down. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> yeah. There is like, there is cool stuff that you could do. Like, I mean, there was this, um, there was this Christian bookstore in San Diego. I can't remember what the name of it was, but they were pretty notorious for having these window displays that were really homophobic. And this is, this was in the nineties when it was like still cool to be homophobic mm-hmm. or, you know, like fine or whatever. And there, it's really easy. You know, we just, you can get like those little tubes of, of super glue and, and at night you just crank it in that fucking lock. Nice. Like you just do it every day. And this is before there was like, uh, you know, surveillance cameras and stuff. And it was just, just like, go fuck their place up every night and subtly fuck it up. I mean, it probably took them like a good month to be like, dude, someone's putting super glue in our lock and we have to get this, shit fucking, <laughs> you know, I mean, there's, there's like a lot of stuff you can do or if, you know, I mean, that's fine. That's like, if you can get to the, the bookstore, but now there's cameras on everything. So you're kind of like, fuck, I don't know. I like, I like that kind of stuff though. It's like super hard to get stink bombs now. It sucks. Like when you get stink bombs, just fucking take one to a church and then bum everyone out. Like it's going to smell like sulfur. You know? Oh, yeah. The little glass vial ones and stuff. Yeah. Can you still get those? I don't know. Because I probably think about those once a week. Like I really could have <laughs> used that right now. Keep an eye out. Yeah. I, th- I don't think you can get them. Anymore. Yeah, I'm sure you can. Got to be able to get them through Amazon or something. <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they have everything. Yeah, I remember buying those, the magic shop. Yep. It's a total necessity. And then, you know, I mean, it's like, you just have to be creative. I mean, we were, when I was younger, we I lived in this co-op and we were composting and we didn't really know like what we were doing. And we just had the, like the compost when the bugs started coming and stuff and it got all hot, you know, and we were like, what do we do now? Uh-huh. Oh, let's dump it through the, 
through the mail slot of the Navy recruiting place where the guy was calling his bags. You know? <laughs> like, oh yeah, that would be like a really good idea to go pour all this shit through their mail slot. Wow. That's what composting is. And then we would be done with that. So, I mean, but I don't know if you can do that kind of stuff anymore. It's harder to get away with shit. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's like, now you just have to tuck shit to people that have two followers on Instagram that like are clearly trolling you. And you're just like, fuck, really, man? This is like a full time job. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm not going to get anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. about the amount of times that like I probably should have died or went to jail or, or something. Not a, not yet. Oh sure. We're glad you are still with us and not locked up or dead. Yeah. Yeah. It'll have it's only a matter of time. <laughs> yeah. Right. What's one of those uh scariest probably you lost one of your lives uh on tour stories? You have any of those? I mean, like uh, you know, accident like van accident or like fi- like people in the crowd wanting to destroy us or what which one you know i don't know which <laughs> yeah i don't i'm not sure it's all i don't know something maybe more fun but uh well uh, I, no. I mean, there's like, you know again it's like what was that that bad no mm-hmm. the, i will say like jokingly the locust is on tour with dillinger and and i and i love dillinger mm-hmm. some of their fans are a little questionable and and I could be wrong, and if I am, Ben will probably correct me. But I think, like, I think they kind of wanted the locust to tour them to to also fuck with their audience and kind of also maybe just sort of level out the the um, the machismo. You know, like let's bring the weird like mm. homoerotic insect looking band on tour. And, and <laughs> anyhow, so we were on tour with them, and, they, and one one of the nights they they canceled. I don't, I'm not sure why. And so ugh, it was a weird show. I I don't know how we ended up on this bill in in like Alabama in this fucking like naval like air force hangar it sounded like shit it sounded terrible Ooh. we played with other bands that were like not quite as cool as um the fans their, their fans weren't quite as tolerable as as dillinger's like they were worse like they were like what the fuck mm-hmm. and i remember playing and there was this really big dude just like fucking people up pretty bad and, and, I, and i was like dude you, you know you gotta stop and I, he was big like uh Cro Magnon big, you know, but I, I think I, I think I probably did something that like I probably fat shamed him with, or something that is not acceptable now. But at the time I was just like, this is no comment because all you guys are fucked right now and this show sucks. Right. And I just like went lowest common denominator and said something fucked up that I that I wouldn't stand by. But regardless, my point was to to, to bum out this dude, you know, and I did. And it was like the whole audience was like laughing and even if they were, even if the audience hated us, they're like, ah, oh, that was really funny. Like the guy said the thing and then the dude got bummed out. And I just look, remember looking at him and like, he, I was like, this guy's going to fucking destroy me after we're done. Mm-hmm. And so as soon as we were done, I was packing my gear up and, and, and he comes up to me and, and he's like, and I, I saw him, you know, I was like, oh fuck, this is going to be bad. He comes up and he's like, where the fuck is the bass player? And I was like, oh yeah, we wear masks. Oh, it's fun. <laughs> And I was like, dude, I don't know, man. Like the whole band just cut out. I'm just the, uh, dude, packing up the shit. Just a roadie. And, yeah. And it was great. And they're like, and he was just like, Rrr! you know, like, I don't know. I probably said something under his mm-hmm. breath to me and then like stormed off. And I was just like, fuck, that was a close one. That guy would have smashed my face. Oh, you know, like shit. no one was around like kind of shit, you know? And I was like, this guy would have just like demolished mm-hmm. me or maybe like thanked me. Who knows? Maybe he's like, I think you're hot. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it was, like, maybe it was like, I don't know. Who knows what he was going to do? He, he's a gay Christian now. Yeah. Probably. We got, uh, we got a couple of friends in a band, uh, blood daubers. They wear masks as well. And Kyle said, that's one of the greatest things about it is you get, uh, just the most honest, uh, reviews from people when you go back to the bar, uh, <laughs> yeah. <after you> play. <laughs> hear them all talking shit about you because they didn't know you were just up there yeah but I, but with that being said like there were times where it's like oh we're playing and you're throwing like full gla- pints of glass you know full pints of beer at us or like uh you know like macing us as we're as we're on stage playing and jesus there's like there's there there has been like crazy shit you know um pretty violent jesus christ but never like where i thought like oh my god we're gonna die i just kind of thought like we're just gonna get fucked up pretty bad and like may- we'll probably get to the next show and like mm-hmm. You know, they would be like, it, it, the probably thing is like, oh, you're only going to slash one of our tires? Like, you're fucking pretty dumb. You should have slashed all four. <laughs> and, uh, and then you're know, like, joke's on them, actually, because they only slashed one. We just fucking switch the tire and go. Right. But now we don't have those problems because people just stay home and talk shit on the internet and then they don't have to go to the show and bother you. And the, so it's pretty convenient. 
I'm glad that's working out for you. <laughs> yeah. Huh. I was thinking we have a mutual acquaintance. So I'm sure we have several, but uh, speaking of the podcasts and industrial, Martin Atkins. Oh, I love that guy. Yeah. He's so fucking cool, man. That guy is like the coolest ever. <laughs> I don't understand. He shouldn't be that cool. It's kind of fucked up for everybody else. No, man. He's just like so genuine and just fucking loves people and doing what he does. Yeah. He's awesome, dude. I wish he was my dad. Yeah. I really like that guy a lot. Yeah. No, oh, yeah, we did too. We, we, uh, had him on the podcast Then we met him after a pig face show and just like, he talked to us like we'd known him for years. Yeah. Uh-huh. And he's got a British accent, which is cool as hell. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, I could listen to him talk all the time. He says like cool shit. You know, he, he can say cunt and get away with like, it's not, <laughs> you know, it's not quite. Cool. Right. <laughs> right. Like, oh yeah. That's, <laughs> he'll use that word appropriately. And okay. This is wild because I did this improv thing with him and it never really amounted to much, but on, when he played drums, fucking dude rips hard. Yes. He does. And like rips hard for his age. And not only that, rips hard in Doc Martin boots. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Man? Oh yeah, mm-hmm. it's crazy because then it's like, why is why? No offense to the guy from the pop group, but why does why is he not in PIL now? Like, uh, he should be in PIL, like playing that shit. Mm-hmm. Because he's doing a bunch of, he does a lot of shit too. Yeah, but Johnny Rotten's an asshole, I think, and didn't didn't ask him. Yeah, I mean, I will say that because Retox got to play with PIL. Mm-hmm. That was one of my, the things. Like that was like, okay, this is this is a big deal, even though it's not really Jaw Wobble and, right. and Keith Levine, and it was like, okay, this is still it's PIL. It's, this is fucking bizarre, right? And it was it was really really good. Um, it could have been better, I think. I, I would have loved to seen Martin in that that band. Oh yeah, he's just such a ripper, mm-hmm. and I feel like what he brought to PIL, especially on um, Flowers of Romance, just changed the game in so many ways where I think he doesn't get the credit that he deserves. And if anyone hasn't, anyone listening to this, like hasn't heard his lecture on, on the flower, the, the flowers of a man's PIL era or whatever. Mm. It's just, it's beyond me. Like how fucking rad that, that album is. I think mostly because of Martin. Yeah, I agree. I don't think he gets enough credit overall. I think there are a lot of people that know Martin Atkins riffs have no idea who the man is. No. Yeah. But why though? It's not fair. It's totally fucked up. Yeah, and his resume is like, oh, you've been all, you've been in all of the cool bands. That's where, that's good for you. Like you were in all of them. <laughs> you know, it's like, how the fuck does someone get in like PIL, Killing Joke, Ministry, Nine Inch Nails? Yeah, like one of them would have been acceptable, but you just went and got in all of them. Right. Yeah. I would love to be in like a in a in like a full band, like a real band with him. That'd be so sick. Dude, get in pig face. They're always bringing in people. Oh, yeah. He asked me to, I was supposed to play uh, in the band it, during that last tour. and No shit. It was, I think, kind of slightly unorganized. Uh-huh. And at one point I was like, dude, when are we rehearsing? Like, I need, I'm i about to, it's because I was like, I think I was involved in uh, another tour. And I, was, I said, I need to just know the material. What are we doing? Mm-hmm. And he kept, you know, he'd, he'd say shit like, don't worry about it. Like, I'm really worrying about it because I'm not going to stick like, <laughs> around with Martin Atkins, you know. And, and I was like, I don't know any of the other players. Like, this is bizarre. And then so at one point he's like, even though you're on the posters and stuff, maybe we should just. I think they cut a bunch of people back. Yeah, yeah. Because it was wild. There was so many people on stage all the time. I was like, I don't, you don't need a fourth bass player. Oh, my God. It's insane. They had like, I, they definitely had like two full bass players and i'm like you don't need me really you don't yeah i'm not gonna help ticket sales like you know i don't know like like for selfish reasons i wanted to go do it but uh, but like on a practical level i was like this is probably not you probably don't want to pay for me to fly over and do whatever yeah it's probably why he wasn't too worried about you learning the material somebody can pick up the part <laughs> if there's like three bass players right. on the <laughs> tell the sound engineer like don't put that guy up in the mix <laughs> <laughs> he is not what he's doing. No, but I, I, I think um, I think it would have been rad. I saw him perform in ministry when I was younger, mm. and it was with two, two drummers, and that was that performance jacked my perception of music up. Where I'm like, there needs to be two drummers in every band. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, why? Why is this not a thing? You know, right? I saw him a little later, but not with Martin. But yeah, that uh, video of uh, in case you didn't feel like showing up, is he in the video? Yeah. It was an, it's an old video. It's uh yeah of that tour. I think they were playing Milwaukee. Oh, it's a live a live performance, not like yeah yeah. Uh, 
Absolutely. Yeah, he's got the uh, museum opening. Yeah. Yeah. I know. And I also like, I love the guy to death, but he, he asked me like, do you want to be uh, on the board of directors? And like, what does that even mean, dude? Like, mm-hmm. well, yeah, but what does that mean? Like, <laughs> I don't even, and then he never told me. And I'm like, I guess I'm on the board of directors of the museum. I don't I have no idea what that means. Right on. I'm like, do you need me to submit anything? I don't know if I have anything of 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 that magnitude to to donate. But yeah, whatever. That guy is he's so cool. Really, really cool dude. Yeah. <clears throat> we should do like a we should do a Martin Atkins appreciation podcast. We should. Oh no, man, we could get a shit ton of people in on that. Yeah. Jesus. Oh yeah. I've had a lot to, uh, of uh, Pig Face members on. Yeah. I was a big fan of theirs uh, for a long time. Well, grew up uh, up in northern Illinois, near Chicago. So Wax Tracks was big for me. Yeah. I, I, it's, I mean, no offense to myself and to Pig Face, but like I never really – I like Pig Face a lot, but I, I never – I was late to the game because mm-hmm. I knew of him in PIL, and I was just like, okay, that was the best PIL shit. Mm-hmm. Well, not the yeah. That was I think it was the best PIL shit with him on it because I I even like this is what you want, this is what you get. Even though they I think he co-wrote most of it, but then like they kicked him out. Yeah, or he quit. You know, and then and then and then it was like oh, and ministry. Oh, and then like and then he was like in Killing Joke for a bit, mm. and then I was like oh, and then Pig Face. That's his band. Like it took me a minute to like get to that. Right. To like fully be like Martin, you know, the coolest. Like I was kind of just like Martin Atkins, and then it was like oh, that's his band. Yeah. That's his thing that he like organizes or, you know, whatever, comp, you know, the company that he organizes or whatever he wants, whatever he calls it. Mm-hmm. All kind of one of the uh, invisible records. Yeah. Banner, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Who are you listening to lately? Who's turning you on? Oh, uh, I don't listen. To, I hate music. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I do. I get a bit burnt out on it. And, I, and it's funny because when I'm not in the studio and stuff, I'm like, I don't want to listen to shit anymore. Mm. What did I just recently... This um this record this friend of mine sent me this record it's 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 a it's a three it's like a not a split a try whatever that is I don't know try try way split three ways but mm-hmm. these three bands No Bueno Seahorse and Arctic Universe okay the album is called I don't even know what it is called it's called Marks Presents Electric Drawing Kit and it's like the dude that's the artist for the layout uh, sent it to me. And I was like, that's cool. Like he's a great artist and stuff, but I, I put the records on. I'm like, fuck each band is like so rad and weird in its own cool way. So, so that was like a really nice, pleasant surprise. Mm-hmm. And then like, you know, I, I put out uh, stuff that I, that I like. So, so like the Sonido de la Frontera record came out recently, which I'm a huge fan of that band. And they actually just went on tour with the Locust and stuff too. So it was nice to be around them and hear that live. And then I don't know, like some of my friends bands, I, I'm always pretty psyched on mainly like my friends. Cause there's the, they're the ones that I get to really kind of connect with mm-hmm. this band called therapy from san diego who's awesome i i knew of them but like seeing them live made me appreciate them more and stuff and i think that was always a plus yeah there's like always cool shit going on Mm -hmm. in southern california that i get to get to check out even when there's a pandemic uh it's still like i still kind of get to get to hear about new things that are happening yeah that's awesome yeah we're always looking for new stuff i mean like there's things that I can't really, you know, like that are, that aren't like even like like that band Netherlands. Three One G is going to put out a Netherlands album, and the new album is just fucking mind blowing. Like, like I already like Netherlands, but I'm like, oh, you're going to just mm-hmm. completely fuck everything up and do this new rad record and like get and let me release it. So like that's cool as hell. So there's shit like that. Yeah, there's always like it's like again, my friends. I get to like work with my friends and not have to be in their band, <laughs> not have to be in their band. <laughs> But just putting out the records and stuff's awesome. Yeah, there's a, there's always like tons of cool shit going on. Right on. Um, oh, there's a new Haunted Horses record. That band I love. Oh yeah, I like Haunted Horses. Yeah. Everyone is going to put out their new record. They played here, uh, and it was crazy because it was like right. I think like when you know the Omicron started becoming a big deal and uh, like not that many people came but they played and it was <clears throat> they got a bass player and it was like holy fuck like you guys are really stepping it up with just adding one more one more instrument hmm. bass is like one of my favorite i mean next to drums is my favorite instrument but i was like dude this is it was so good man they're so fucking killer so there's the new haunted horses record that that 3 one is gonna release that's it's just 
it's on the level, man. Like I'm pretty fucking psyched about that. Right on. Yeah. I really dig them. Uh, buddy, Matt Amix turned me out of them, uh, here a while back. Great fucking band. Yeah. That's cool. They're going to be releasing them. Yeah. Anybody else on three, one G in the works got another, uh, album coming out or just focusing on that one for now or, I mean, those are new ones. And then, uh, we just put out like a bunch of shit and we're reissuing some stuff. We're actually reissuing this record. It hasn't been like announced yet. Hmm. But um, this band, End of the Line, I don't know if, if, if you guys are aware of them or, or whatever, but it was re- originally released on Ebullition, and it was kind of mostly that band Heroin, but a different a different lineup with a different singer. Okay. And um, one of my favorite hardcore records. But yeah, we're reissuing the End of the Line record, which I'm really, really excited about. Uh-huh. It's one of those things where like, I'm, I'm pretty sure it holds up musically. I mean, maybe it does. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's just because I grew up obsessing over the, the record and the band, you know, in my younger years that like, it's just going to always be awesome to me. Mm-hmm. But they went ahead and got the tapes and baked them and, and like dumped them digitally and remixed and remastered it. So it sounds pretty incredible because the ebullition mix is not uh, very good. So, so it, like this sounds very cohesive and it just sounds like, it sounds like a really, really good hardcore record. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, when like uh, a lot of a lot of bands wanted to sound like Void or something, and uh-huh. I don't know if bands that set out trying to sound like Void ended up sounding like Void, uh-huh. but the, I feel like these guys came pretty close to sounding like at least in that that DC realm of of hardcore. Uh-huh. But uh, anyhow, it's yeah, that's that's one thing I'm really excited about. It's cool, like to be able to listen to a record that I listened to when I was 16, and it's. 30 years later, I'm like, this is still really good. Wow. So that that's that's something that, you know, without like being like one of the classics, like without being a, like a birthday party record or or a, right. like whatever, like, you know, just like, oh yeah, in, end of the line. Like that band like totally still holds up t- to me at least. So mm-hmm. I'm excited about that. Yeah. It's always disappointing when they don't. <laughs> uh. <laughs> it is a trip. You know, I do wonder about that. Like, d- does it, is this like, cause nostalgia sucks. Yeah. It can, yeah. It sucks in a way that it like fucks you up. You know, you're just like, is it yeah. is it good or do I just like it because it reminds me of when I was a child and like things weren't quite as gnarly or something. Yeah. It doesn't happen as often to me with, with music as it does with like TV or movies, things like that. Films, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I watched that movie Suburbia mm-hmm. not too long ago, like during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the punk rock one with the Vandals and DI and, and TSOL. And that movie does not hold up at all. No. <laughs> um, there's a lot of problems in that one. Like, you know, for one, like totally racist, totally sexist, totally homophobic. I'm like, wow, this is weird, man. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. How much we were just oblivious to. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, I guess like that's why, like we had to kind of shed that like nihilism of punk rock and kind of go like, hey, that shit's dumb. Sure. Like Sid wishes his T-shirt was stupid. And we're going to move on. And be and do something like something cooler and be like a little a little bit smarter. But there was still like the nostalgic aspect to watching that film where I was like, oh, you know, the little kid at the end dies at the Mohawk. It's like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> but there was all these like pieces of shit in the movie, like yeah. through and throughout the whole film. <laughs> so it's kind of weird. <laughs> like pieces of shit, like the, the the good characters were pieces of shit. You're just like, wow, this guy sucks, man. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna have to rewatch it now. I watched it a few years ago and remembering that and just being like, oh no. Yeah, I, I do think that the the musical performances by all the bands hold up. That that's like my favorite part of the film. But then the, you know, but there's like the, there's the there's like all these little problems. Like mm-hmm. the, the, I think the one guy, the skinhead's name is Skinnerd or Skinner or something. It's like, I remember as a kid thinking like, why is the skinhead hanging out with the punks? That's weird because in real life he would be beating me up, you know. <laughs> right. And so it was kind of like I don't understand this. Not to bring the conversation full circle back to skinheads, but um, I, you know, I just it was just one of those things. I was like, this doesn't make a lot of sense, you know. And then there, there's a line in the movie where where the 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 main guy Jack is talking about his stepdad and about how how does he say he's like about how his stepdad's a cop and the other guy's like, oh, that's a drag, and he's like, that's not the worst. He's black, and then, then the guy's Jesus. like, Jesus. Oh, black cop and you're just like what the fuck man like why'd you have to put that line right in there? right there's no need you're really just hating on cops just stop right there and move on because now that fucking character sucked to me i remember even as a as a as a 10 year old you know watching that i was just like ugh, like why do you hate your like and then if and then when you watch the film like 
I mean, okay, there's no good cops. I get it. He's just the one good cop. But yeah. like, he's the good, he's a, he's a, a cop trying to be a good guy. You're just like, oh, well, you're not like a total dick, you know, even though he's a cop. And so it's like, oh, but you guys have to be like racist against him. Like, that just seems fucking lame. Right. Yeah. So it, it's got a lot of problems in it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, just even like, okay, this is like a crazy example uh, of something that just kind of set me off watching you know because i got a kid we watched rudolph the red-nosed reindeer and fuck if santa wasn't a douche (laughs) (laughs) seriously man oh that nose isn't gonna do rudolph well what the hell man like shunning yeah (laughs) that whole story i don't know yeah there's a lot of problems you're just like oh and you're gonna just hang out with a bunch of elves that are like your fucking slave labor like you know it's like you you know, this, <laughs> right. this sweatshop capitalist asshole oh yeah you know and then you're just like there's a lot of problems with santa with santa claus they really are absolutely yep <laughs> they wouldn't have gone over <laughs> today it's like, like rudolph would not have flown no today no. he would have took a shit on you know on the on the production, whatever the toy production, and just bailed and been like, "Fuck you, fine, fuck you guys." Right? He starts his own group. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you! I don't need Santa. Yeah, he'd start like an only only fans uh, for for uh, <laughs> <laughs> light fetishists. Uh, yeah, nineties hip hop is a problem too. Only up with homophobia, I find that. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's rough to go back. And it's like, oh, yeah, I love that song you play. And it's like, uh oh, I forgot about that part. Totally. I remember getting getting psyched on this rapper named Paris. He was on Tommy Boy. And I was like, really, really into him. He's like, oh, and he's like, a, he was like a Black Panther. I was like, fucking nay, man. And his shit was like super righteous. And I'm like, wait a minute, you're dropping the F bomb. Like, mm. And I was like, whoa, and then you're like, you totally hate gay people. Like, yeah, this is fucking weird like i don't know if i can be into this now yeah it is weird it's really weird when you have somebody that they really give you something that you identify with and then they go way off in this other direction you're like what the fuck how can you reconcile you mean like bad brains (laughs) right (laughs) oops oops the fucking quintessential like free pass for punk rockers right there it's like dude those guys fucking sucked back then man like yeah that not only were they singing about like being homophobic they were like they robbed the big boys and like fucking stole from them because they were gay and like that shit's fucked up like no it's cool everyone's gonna wear it it's like not the same thing but it's just like dude you you know it's like it's like when you meet an asshole that's like wearing uh the fucking first screwdriver record they're like you weren't racist yet like (laughs) right it doesn't matter it doesn't matter right yeah yeah Yeah. the first record street punk and you're like yeah it's worse than the racist shit like musically (laughs) worse at least you know like just fuck off so i don't know i mean as much as i think bad brains is probably one of the best musical hardcore bands i think that i can't i was like this is not cool that they're homophobic you know you know, and then finding a reference point like would be that band Go. I'm not sure if you're familiar with them, mm-hmm. but I remember in the Go record and and that 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 first song where he's like "fuck you, dreadlock motherfucker," and I was like, "whoa, dude, what's that?" And then and then like putting two and two together and do, and like figuring out that like oh that's about HR and it's about bad brains and mm-hmm. Go is actually kind of better than bad brains. Like this shit's rad. So. I was I was lucky to to find stuff like that. I suppose. Yeah. No, well, well, yeah. It's a good thing there's an alternative, or always an alternative to people like that. But yeah, yeah, that really sucks. Bad brains. Uh, you know, they were talented, but uh, apparently a bunch of assholes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the hardcore purists are gonna be mad about this one. Probably. <laughs> they won't be listening. <laughs> Yeah, they'll be like, oh, the guy from The Locust, yeah, we don't need to hear that podcast. No, nah, well, you know, I don't think we really uh, appeal to them too much. We don't have a problem telling them to fuck off. Yeah. And we don't want them to listen anyway. I don't know. I like to tell a lot of people to fuck off. I'll, I mean, I'll tell myself to fuck off even, and it's fine. You know, it's just, it is what it is. I just think, yeah, fuck bad brains. Yeah, that's fair. So there's that. Huh? I'm on board. <laughs> <laughs> we got them coming up next week. Yes. That'll be, Tune in. We'll say hi for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They've apologized, I think, since then publicly or, or somehow they said where they were sorry. And it all comes back to Rastafarianism and it's like, well, fuck that shit, because that that's that's pretty whack too. Right. I, I think we do have to give people the opportunity to reconcile for some of those things, knowing whether they're earnest or not, or whether they're doing it, you know, just because we're living in an age where they can't survive. 
Yeah. If they don't say it. Yeah. I don't know. Are you going to give Louis C.K. a pass because he said sorry for jerking off, you know, in front of everybody? Like, Yeah. There's the rub. <laughs> uh, no, I'm I mean, maybe HR said sorry for writing those lyrics, but like, fuck, man, he he could have just. There's so many things that he could have wrote about, and he wrote about that, you know, like that's that's just pretty dumb. But not even that. Their actions, you know, like yeah, robbing big boys. Big boys are fucking awesome. They're awesome in general, but like also they, you know, being like a gay punk band in, in the '80s, like that's that's a big deal, right? Like I feel like you shouldn't have fucked with them. Period, you know, but they they did. So their priorities were something. Yeah. And those apologies are always coming, you know, way after the fact. And (laughs) when, you know, more people are turning on to it and understanding the history, what happened? The internet happened and they're like, oh, shit, you can Google that now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, now I'm sorry. Like, Wait a minute, you can Google that I fucking robbed the, you know. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Uh, Awfully convenient. Yep. Yeah. Man, anything else that you want to plug or pitch or anything like that? We want to get to any mentions that you uh, have to drop or business wise. I don't know. Those are always a weird. That's always weird. like, let me suck my own dick for a minute. Yeah, you gotta make money, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? When, when's that gonna happen? I don't know. Uh, make money. <laughs> I don't, yeah, buy buy the buy the Def Club record that came out so I can make money because I I'm in the hole. I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, buy the Def Club record. Like, yeah, it just came out. We're going to put another one out in like a couple weeks. Yeah. Buy the Def Club record. All right. Def Club. Def Club. Got it. Yeah, that's uh, a productive disruption. We have another record that's come. we're going to announce it in a couple weeks. It's way better. But buy the one right now that's not that great just so we can break it in. <laughs> and then I'll... <laughs> The making money thing's hilarious. I'm still still dripping out on that. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> I wanted to pick up the uh, Dead Cross record, and I saw that the vinyl sold out on at least Bandcamp. Is there another place to go if I wanted to get that? No, there's not. They re- they put in a repress, but you know it takes like an e- a year now, so they're they're waiting for that. Yeah. Oh, I know. Well, I bitch about this almost every episode lately. Is Abdel? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's like. Who? Why? What? Like, really? Okay. Yeah, it'll come out. It'll be repressed. The new um, Dead Cross record will be done. It's actually, I think, finally, maybe officially mixed. So it'll come out in 2022, according to Ipecac. I I think that that, just wait for that record. That'll be better than the first one, in my opinion. Really? Hmm. Yeah, yeah. We we put a little bit more effort into it this time. That's exciting. Get a little more chemistry, maybe. Well, you know, when when we did the first record, we we had a different singer and we, we, we were a bowling for 12 days. We, you know, yeah. I mean, no offense to ourselves, but we half that record was kind of farted out. We were just like, what are we doing quick? Get it out. There it is. And then, you know, I think this, the new one, we, we had a little bit of time to kind of think it through. And I think it's a lot better than the first record. Yeah. Um, it's different. I'll just leave it at that. But I would just say that record will probably be out before you can, <laughs> Before you can buy the repress of the first one. Which, <laughs> really? Okay. Well, yeah, I don't know. It takes so long for shit to get manufactured these days. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. That's crazy. I'll pick up both of them. We'll look forward to it. Yeah. Just stream it on Spotify and then we'll get like 0.0005%. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> I can go to band camp, chip in some books. Yeah. Right on, man. Well, we don't want to, you know, keep you on all night or anything, but okay. man, we appreciate you coming on. We had a good time. Absolutely, man. Hell yeah, man. It's awesome. I appreciate you guys having me on and like giving a shit about stuff that I've been part of. I, I, that That's um, flattering in itself. I just, you know, I'm like, who cares? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So thank you. Friend. We wouldn't want to do it any other way. I appreciate it. And you guys have had some very impressive guests. So I, I feel uh, honored to be up there with, with those ones. Well, we feel honored to have you yeah. uh, join that list. Well deserved. Thanks, everybody listening to uh, Undetermined the Podcast. Special guest, Justin Pearson. Awesome. Justin, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Have a great night, everybody.